I definitely appreciate what I have right now. It's cool to be able to travel around, do what I love doing, meet people that also love doing what I do. I think the realization that I'm now here playing video games and I'm 20 years old won't come until a lot later. Right now I just have to keep focusing on my practice and keep moving forward with my play rather than like thinking back all on it right now. We have been a lot more successful than I had thought we would at the beginning of the season. I would say that we're pretty lucky to have this kind of life. Welcome back to the 2014 League of Legends World Championship as I am joined here by Mata after securing, of course, that place in the semifinals yesterday. Um, I'd like to start by picking your brain on the bottom lane matchup that's going on in this game, as you know both sides very well. Mata 선수 클라운 19과 삼성 블루 팀의 바텀 듀오 경기력에 대해서 좀 평가해 주세요. 어, 일단 두 팀과 많은 스크림 게임을 했는데 어, 오늘 경기 본 결과로서는 C9 바텀 라인은 좀 평소보다 더 잘한다는 느낌을 많이 받고요. 어, 그리고 블루 같은 경우에는 좀 스크림 때는 잘했는데 좀 대회 때는 좀 실력이 덜 나오는 것 같아요. So we played both um, C9 and Samsung Blue in a lot of scrims. I think Lemon Nation and Sneaky, they're having a great day. They're playing really well. Other hand, Deft and Heart, they're not doing so well, but I think they're catching up. Yeah. Um, do you think they can catch up in time? Do you think Samsung Blue will close it out now? Or how do you think the series will advance? Do you think Samsung Blue will win or win Oh, the first I think Samsung Blue is a slow starter team, so they might have dropped the first game, but as they won second and third game, I think they're going to close it at the fourth. All right, if you think they will close it out, when I talked to Imp and Dandy, they said, well, we'd rather not play them. Do you dare to step up and maybe take some confidence that you do want to play them and maybe beat them? 그 같은 팀 동료인 인프 선수랑 데니 선수는 이왕이면 4강전 때 클라우드 나인을 붙고 싶다고 이제 인터뷰 때 말했었는데 마타 선수는 어떻게 좀더 자신 있게 삼성 브라운 붙고 싶다라고 얘기할 수 있나요? 어, 그러니까 이번에 좀 4강에서 연속 세 번으로 만나는 기회가 생길 수도 있는데 어, 세번 이상 실수 없거든요. 이번에 이 so, if we meet Samsung Blue again at the semifinals, this is our third time, and we can't lose all three. So, we have to win no matter what. All right. Well, thank you very much. Mata says Samsung Blue will win. Will they take game four? We'll find out right now with our casters. Thank you very much, Shock. So, they can't lose three in a row. Well, we'll see where they get there first. They've got one more game, possibly two to go before they get to that stage. Cloud9, it is now or never for them. Samsung Blue have them on the ropes. Well, I mean, they can't lose three in a row, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I mean, Samsung Blue have shown that they've, you know, had a bit of a ropey start to things, got gradually better and better and better. But there's something still nagging there from Cloud9 that they they can still do it in this game. It takes two in a row, of course, now with this best of five and the two-one scenario. And for me, that might just be a step too far. Yeah, it is definitely Cloud Nine's turn to change it up. And especially, as the analyst was pointing out, in the level ones. Cloud Nine, the first game around, they got this big advantage from their level one in their bold invade. But Blue adapted really well to it and made them pay for it. So here we go, picks and bands underway. Game four, will it be the final one? Or do Cloud9 have an answer? They're back on the blue side. It's the side they favor. It's where they picked up a lot of their wins throughout the summer. The question is, can they take one over blue? Thresh ban coming out again. A zillion first time ban this time for Samsung Blue. Alistair, got to expect to be in there somewhere. Dead taken away as well by Cloud9, so not much of a change on that front. On the other side, though, Will Samsung Blue stick to their usuals? It will be an Alistair ban as well. I'm kind of looking for a Lee Sin to show up here somewhere. Now, Ooh. there's a possibility for Cloud9 to actually pick it for Meteos because he did have success on it, but yeah. he never really jumped full in on that champion and Ooh. really decided okay. that it was his most choice. Is there Cloud9. it is. Yep. They go for it. So he is full in on Lee Sin here. Now, he had a really good record in North America with this champion. Yep, 7-2, in fact, was that record 
had 23 kills, 63 assists on it, only 15 deaths. We'll see how he does this time around. Of course, also played it once so far in Worlds. Has a 100% record on that. We're going to see Maokai locked in for Samsung Blue. And of course, oh. the change here for Cloud9 was not oh. finding out Thresh and letting Yasuo through oh, for the yeah. first time. Yeah, they've been out Thresh instead of Yasuo this time around. And we will get to see, I guess, here why everybody bans it so much against Dade. This is a really, really fearsome combo. Not only is Dade on Yasuo, but they've comboed Yasuo with Maokai, which is one of the most, if not the most beastly team fighting combo there is in the entire game. Oh. Rough, rough start. Good we'll answer, though. This is a good mid-game answer. Yeah, as you say, Rumble getting locked in once again for balls. Got to make sure he works those teleports well this time. And, of course, Sneaky taking away the Corky from Deft, who was just immaculate on it last game. I do like both of these picks from Cloud9. They can make a very strong early and mid-game push here, especially with Lee Sin to facilitate both of these lanes. They have an opportunity to try and snowball it early, but they are going to have to do something early on because if you go into Maokai plus Yasuo late, like this team fighting is ridiculous. Maokai's just little bump that he gets from Arcane Smash is enough to trigger uh, the Yasuo ultimate. And then he also has all the reduction there once Yasuo is inside. So the melees all get their damage reduction. It's it's really hard to see. So we'll see what Cloud9 can do with the missile barrage of Corky and the great equalizers that Balls has been able to pull out. We are going to see Nami locked in and Rengar as well. Four Spirit, not one of his you know most played champions. Not, I say not one of. I mean he did play all that much variety. He had five games on it during OGN on playoffs. Three for two records, so, you know, not amazing, but also we've seen some very, very scary Rengars across the board during the World Championship. Yeah. We've also seen Spirit play at the one time where he did pick up a win for his team. One of the big generalizations that the League community likes to make is that Korean Rengars are amazing and everybody else's Rengars suck. And it actually is true quite a lot it really of is the time. True. I mean, <laughs> the Rengars come okay. out of Korea. Okay, okay, okay. So, All right. Talon once again for High. The stats, not so strong for High's Talon, but he's led Nanjing White Shield on a merry dance with it before. I'll tell you those stats exactly. Yeah. Two losses out of two games played, three kills, 16 deaths, uh, yeah. four assists, a KDA of 0 0.44. Definitely not been the strong point for High so far here at Worlds. Brown, of course, was picked for Lemon Nation. And now we're going to find out what Deft is going to bring to the table. <laughs> so he's hovering over David here. Uh, in the lobby, yeah. they were actually chatting with There's each other. Diego, yeah. These guys <laughs> are friends. And Sneaky was like, OK, how about I'll take Draven and you take Twitch? And we meet up, right? Because that's a ridiculous lame matchup for Draven. And, and uh, Deft was just humoring him a little bit for the last pick here. But it will be Twitch. The double stealth here for Blue, Rengar plus Twitch and the ridiculous combo. Not only do they have Maokai to knock up, but also Nami if Acorn's not able to set up Dade. Whew. Some really, really strong team fights actually from both teams here. I think that Cloud9 just has to make an early move though if they want this one to, uh, to turn out positively for them. And there's the question again. We always talk about um, predictability and we talked about it already in this game because Cloud9 were doing the same at level 1. Last time around Samsung Blue had it in their heads and were able to do something about that. Now the question becomes do you do it again? Is that less predictable than changing it up after it was already countered? I well, don't know. They could uh, invade the opposite side and try and catch them out and said, you know, invade top side and, um, and try and pull a fast one. The good thing is Braum is amazing in level 1s and Lee Sin is also very good in level one, so that would go in their favor. The other thing that's great for them, Lee Sin is better at ganking mid early than Rengar is because the bushes are so far apart. So unless it's like a really good counter gank, that could be a saving grace for High and his talent. Definitely tricky situation for Cloud9 here. Do they go for it? Do they roll the dice and maybe go for that level one play, which is kind of backfired on them in a, the last few times they tried it. And let's not forget the time they played Fnatic back in the quarterfinals <laughs> last time at Season 3 Worlds. Of course, for you guys at home, it is now your turn to turn to Twitter. And once more, let us know who you think will take this matchup. Tweet us hashtag Cloud9Win or C9Win. Or, of course, hashtag SSBWin for Samsung Blue. And, of course, we hope you guys 
get behind Cloud9. That's what we want to see in the votes. Don't forget to include at LOL Esports in there as well. I think game two was 94% yeah, or they were something. Definitely behind so them. They were definitely behind <laughs> them at that point. That may well have changed, though, with Samsung Blue now on game point here, possibly setting up a semi-final all Samsung encounter. Would be amazing to watch, but, well, this one far from over. Let's see what Cloud9 pull out of the bag. All right, let's see. Some early vision down. Everybody on the bottom side here for Cloud9, so it's already looking like they might do the same situation here. Try and invade, get one of those wards down so they can have vision on one of the buffs. Def does see them. There is a slight difference, though. Meteos not taking the sweeper here right at the start, which is something they did before. Ooh. Yep. Sneaky got a shot on him, but that does show the entire Cloud9 team now with that single ward, which means it's free for Samsung Blue. They're going to go in and get some deep yep. wards, get some cover, and look, Acorn's going to ward the top lane very deep, so we're going to see whether we get any lane switches against this Twitch. Yeah, low mobility Twitch, Corky plus Braum, oh, really, really scary ward. to go into. Ah, they've given it away. That sweeping lens would be real useful right now. <laughs> well, not really. Like, if you clear out a little... Well, that's true. I mean, they're the going to see it anyway, they right? They would have done it there, so... Cloud9 are moving up towards the red buff. Ward goes inside of the pit, and they decide, let's march oh. on over onto the other side. They have vision of Samsung Blue. They know they've gone in there, and they know they've not come out of the other side, so... Looks like Cloud9 and Samsung Blue here covering a lot of map before the minions start pouring in. Big difference this time around. Cloud9 and Vision on both sides of Blue's jungle. Hi, though. Hi's going to go in to face check this. He's got the rest of the team with him. They're all going to come around, gets the rake down, but Lemonation not close enough to land in their heart. Might get. He wants money, is what he wants. Get that free harass money. And he gets it, but it may well cost him. Hi's going to get forced away here. Interesting supports through the mid here. They're trying to track that lane swap. They're going for the blue. That's what they're doing. They've gone into the blue. Yeah. It's going to be the red. Will they trade? It's, That's the question. Yeah, it's the standard lane swap buff trading here. Uh, trying to jungle on the side that your dual lane is going to be. That's the safest and highly recommended route to go with these trades. Hart does make his way all the way up to top, though. We'll see when he starts roaming from this top side. Because blue do have to be a bit careful. They don't have any real wards down by that dragon, so it is up to Cloud9 uh, if they decide to go for it while Death freezes up top. Actually, the freeze, there's no gonna, there's not gonna be any freeze up top. They're gonna be pushing it fairly quickly here. Yeah. And may just send Brengar and Maokai towards that top side and see if they can just get rid of an, a very early turret here. We are gonna see both AD carry and support moving into that one. They're doing the wolf camp. You can see that Akon already wanting to leave there. It does look like they may be headed that way. So, one of the things about Blue and why they lane swap so much is because they tailor their strategies around the fact that they have this soft early game. They work with their players up and tailor their strategy so they lane swap so that you can trade objectives early on and they can feed experience onto Deft to get him into a position to carry for those late game team fights because he is always their really big damage source. And actually, statistically from group stages, Acorn and Heart were the slowest to level six for top lane and supports, respectively. That ward is going to give them vision. They're not going to be able to come down to do a quick early oh. dragon this time around. Pink ward, though, spotted. immediately. Pink ward from Heart. They may still try and collapse and get this turret, but they're going to all get trained into a trap! It's Ward's heart here. Can he go down? No, the turnaround comes in. Spirit, the damage is massive onto Medios, and he has to flash instantly over the wall. Close stuff there, and a flash burn already. Yeah, that's a dangerous thing about laying traps for three people when you only have two people in the bush. <laughs> You're not going to come out ahead there, and they have to end up burning their own flash in that. Really well played early swap here by Blue. They were able to get heart roaming early enough to stop the dragon. They immediately went to go pink ward that blue because they knew the expected route there from Cloud9 and the expected vision control. So they've been able to control it and they're going to get that wave pushing. This mid lane going to be a very interesting one though. Yasuo versus Talon. Hi. And Dade, we said it in at the very start, it was our featured matchup for this best of five. Hi 
has to step up in this game. Zed in game two, didn't really have an effect. Oh, Rengar gonna dive onto Ball. Ball's in trouble here, he's gonna get slowed, stunned, locked up by Spirit, he's got nowhere to go. And that is a clean, easy first blood for Samsung Blue in the top. And the first blood went to depth. This is gonna be really, really bad for Cloud9. Getting that Twitch up to level six and up to the gold amount he needs for Blade of the Ruin King really early is going to be very, very scary all over the map. Not only do you have to worry about level six Rengar ganks, you're gonna have to worry about Twitch ganks with Blade. Trying a little bit there to push back in that bottom side though. That's Acorn and Heart were forced away there. That lane being frozen now by Sneaky and Lemonation. Now, not only did Blue stop the Dragon, but they also were shoving very quickly in this lane, and they got more CS onto Acorn than Balls got because of Heart running down with him to CS and CS in that lane. They're gonna get this turret, top turret, up top much, much quicker than Cloud9, and they didn't have to give up Dragon for it. Well, High is under pressure in this mid lane. They pretty much had it to themselves right now, and you can see he's felt Fairly heavily behind Ade already. Ade, every single time he gets a chance, gets that hit so close to hit level six. There it is. Is he going to oh, land he hit it? it? Doesn't <laughs> go for it. A little too close to the turret. Didn't fancy it just yet. I have to say, this just does come back to the thing that Cloud9 was saying in all their interviews, how Blue do a lot of what Cloud9 do, but just a bit better. Cloud9 love the lane swap and do this top laner plus support as a dual lane down bottom quite often as well to try and get sneaky to his power points. But this time around, Blue pulled off the swap. They've done it really well. They've also got some farm on Acorn. We'll have to see. The mid lane though, right now, Dade doing a very, very good job controlling high. Midos hasn't been able to get over there to try and snowball him. Now he's going bottom though. Oh, I don't think he's going to pull the trigger. Does take tower damage though. He's going to have to get away from that one. Here comes Samsung Blue trying to collapse, trying to push in that. And Minios, he just has to safeguard the safety. And good bubble there right underneath the turret, causing the big problems for Meteos. And so far, it's Samsung Blue ruling the roost. Thousand gold in the lead. If we look down the lanes, top lane is ahead, mid lane is ahead. Just sneaky once again, who has been a real shining light for Cloud9 so far in this best of five. Yeah, it's just terrible news for Cloud9 up on that top side of the map, especially because Spirit went up to get a level three Rengar gank, and he was fortunate enough to have Balls walk close enough to a bush. That extra kill, Balls can't even go into a lane right now because there's so much kill pressure from depth. Level six Twitch to level four Rumble. Balls has been trying to clean up that white and then just teleport all the way back, waiting for this lane to get to his turret so he can soak up some experience. So bottom lane turret, first one of the game for Cloud9. Will head off their way. I did try and make his way down there, was spotted out. Level six Rangar. The way he's gonna go in, he's gonna pounce, he gets the lock up on high, he's in trouble. Can he get away? Oh, oh. Dale with a beautiful ulti. And that was all too easy. Yep. Buy your pink ward, come into lane with the ulti. Expected every single move. Blue were one step ahead of high. Amazingly well done there. And so far, Samsung Blue looking good here in what could be the final game of this best of five. Balls, meanwhile, taking a beating on the top side of the map once again from Death to just stealth up in there. Gets all the shots off. Oh, like sponging for that extra damage. Balls less than half HP. Blue are doing dragon, putting pressure on the top lane. And this is going to be another big chunk of gold for them. Yep, really good kill. That's their reward for the kill in mid. They gain control of that all important mid lane. They already had vision control around that dragon, and they do reap the rewards. One of the things that we got to point out, because we're talking about all these Rangars and the differences in success between the Korean Rangars and the rest of them is that a lot of the Korean Rangars have been going with these mobility boots early and building a lot of damage early. Instead of going for that cooldown reduction route pretty early on, it just makes those first couple of Rangar ultimates easier to pull off because you have that extra speed to get in position and you have that ability to get around the map. We'll also see if that helps him out later down the line when he goes oh. around looking for kills with Deft. Keeps on bouncing route, Meteos coming in. A little too early, High doesn't want any of it. I is slipping behind in this one. It's going to become a serious problem. You can see with that zeal already picked up. 
on the top lane. Deft has pretty much had free roam, and you can see Crippo getting involved in this one. One of those moments where I just <laughs> want to be wrong. Come on, Cloud9, take it home. They really are going to have to dig deep because this game has already started out so, so well for Samsung Blue. And yeah. there's another tweet, this time from Bjergsen. Smart picking by Blue, forcing high onto Talon. This game is going to be difficult and, well, it's not wrong. The stats do Yeah, it's looking very good. And it's such a hard lane as well oh. for Hyas again. They dive in with the ultimate. High this time yeah. though, trying to put some damage back. Here comes that stealth. Oh, Spirit now trying to get on the back. The Sneaky will be able to get on top of him. He's got poison doing damage at the same time. Flash away. Spirit gets that kill. But Medios is there. Ball. Lemon Nation, they're almost fighting one versus one on three different fronts here. Meteos finally joins in, they'll kill off Hart. Good little bubble, Lemon Nation will be able to walk up to three for one. Cloud9 make the collapse up there, and the only person not to get his hand in on any of it is Talon in the mid lane. So High's gonna shove that mid up, and Cloud9 come away with a one for three. Good first step here back into this game. Oh yeah, and say, just as we said, we need to see them get and create something, it worked well for them. Meteos getting himself some kills on that board, and they're not done yet. They're going to try and stick around, Koi. Some pressure for Aegon on this top turret. The irony is that Dade, he just used his ultimate on his own in that mid lane and create the pressure so high. He couldn't join that situation, but ooh, if Dade could have been there to get involved in that one. Aegon, is he going to face himself going into this push? They catch on towards him. Can they lock up the stun? Not close enough. That one. Sneaky, oh, they're going to go. They're going to go for it. Have they got enough? Twisted in advance. Tries to lock on balls, but Ooh. Sneaky comes in and gets himself a kill on the board. They continue pressure up top. They've also got Meteos on that top side, so they should be able to get the turret afterwards as well. And you see the immediate response from Blue. They know they've lost control of this side of the map, and they ping down bottom on the bottom turret. Signal for Def to start trying to shove to answer. This is a full health turret, so it's going to take a while for Cloud9 to take it down. And they get it on that minion wave. Spirit looking to make something happen mid, though. No ultimate available, so Dade would have to start it by charging his knockup. Oh, there is the ultimate oh, coming yeah. in, but it doesn't matter once again. The pink the one is down, it. and Dade will get the kill. What? Very tight to the turret, and Balls gets through oh. that bubble as well. The knockup does come in from Dade, Two. but the damage is there from oh, Balls. Heat. Dade's burning. The oh, oh, heat comes oh, in, and he can't continue for the kill. Got it back up. Up he's, coming. he's coming around the side, as is Sneaky. They're all collapsing on this one, and Samsung Blue biting off more than they can chew and being forced to back away from that one. They've got a little minion wave coming in. There's more to follow. They're going to try and put some damage down on this turret. Samsung Blue should react in time. Death is going to come around, but taking a little dose of his own medicine with some of those rockets being blasted towards him. Yeah, Cloud9 did a good job taking down all of the perimeter turrets here from Blue. Uh, but they still have to worry about all these invisibilities oh. that Blue do have. Because now Spirit does have his ultimate available. Death gonna chunk out Sneaky. Time to run. Cloud9 can't stick around the Valkyrie. Although I say they can't stick around. The rest of the team right back in there. We don't have Acorn in the middle, but he's got teleport. Should a fight kick off. Spirit has gone back into his jungle, which is in full view of Cloud9. Thanks to that ward that I believe Meteor's placed just a little bit earlier on when he was on that top side of the map. But for now, it quietens off, which gives us a chance to look at the gold. 5-4 up in kills are Cloud9, up to one in towers as well. It's 1,000 gold that separates these two teams. Yep, only 1,000 gold, and Cloud9 do have... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Spotted by a ward, but Acorn knows he's in and trouble. And they it in. There's the teleport. Can Lemonade... I don't think he can no, interrupt him, no. He will get away. He did have Spirit with him as well, but Andrew... Couple of members of Cloud9 up there. Four members trying to close in. That may give Dade just enough time to get on towards the turret. No, I is there quickly to react. Having that teleport down is pretty big for Cloud9. Now, getting that summoner not available does take away some of the threat of these invisibility picks that Blue can pull off. But once again, Hart trying to set up vision control in preparation for this dragon. 40 seconds ahead, trying to get some sight down. Ward surviving. There's one or two there even for Samsung Blue outside of the Dragon. Half a minute until that comes up, they have control. Even though Cloud9 are down right now, they do have the key items there for Corky and Rumble for this Dragon fight. 
So if they're able to get good positioning and land a strong Rumble Ultimate, then they can still come out ahead here. Brom Wall will do a good job blocking some of uh, Death Spray and Prey if Lemonation is able to position himself correctly. Meanwhile, uh, Cloud9 are going to have to work around that wind wall from Dade. And we'll see if Sneaky can maneuver himself. They shove up mid, though, because of the threat of Dragon Cloud9 going to get this turret down just in time. And there's no Dragon been taken by Blue. Really good call from Cloud9. And now they push themselves out of the river. Samsung Blue had a little tactical advantage in there, but now Cloud9 can come in, sweep all of those wards they just placed, and they've got to go the whole long route all the way around the side. If they can bully them out of vision around Dragon, that would be huge. Here comes Spirit, though. Oh, can he get it? Step Brom the ball right down. Now. Where's he going to go? He's down. Down. right up to the front there. Lemon Nation will catch him in a damage. Then the equalizer. He's got onto death. Got the slow, but not too much damage. Samsung Blue going to come back. Oh. He's looking to get in. Wind oh. Wall used. No equalizer, though. That's huge because now it's pretty much all of the high to kill death to get back there and try and 100% him, which is a tall order because he's only level 10. He needs that level 11 ulti. Wind Wall will be back in a moment. They're going to try and get it up. You can see Spirit trying to charge himself. Death is going to be the focus. Exhaust. Meteos. Meteos has to get out of there. High comes in. Oh, they're just getting wrecked in the third pit, though. It's not working out. They try and go in. They get themselves one, two. Can they clean up? Sneaky in the back. Oh, sneaky. sneaky. The dragon's <laughs> all over him. Part the hell out of there. Oh, I'm going to up. Who's He's going to die. He's going to die. He's going to die. The dragon's going down. Sneaky just <laughs> bides his time. Oh. Literally sneaky shooting fish in a barrel there. Hart had nowhere to go, and he gets the dragon on top of it. What a fight from Cloud9, even without the equalizer. I think the turning point is Meteos deciding to go back in and sacrifice himself. He gets a kick on a bunch of low targets. But here they go. They do go on deck, even without the equalizer. Everybody jumps in. High tries to get there as well with his ulti, but at this point, it looks like it's lost. Meteos goes back in, gets the kick onto everybody, and Balls comes in with the uh, flame spitter the entire time. Dragon does do a lot of damage to Cloud9 during that, though. And as we know, we know the end of this tale. <laughs> oh. And Dragon, how sweet for Cloud9 to pull it back to even. But again, it's still even, and you have to continue to out oh, Hart, Hart caught out of position here. He's not going to get Dragon. away. The burst of the ultimate from high will pick up his first kill of this game. And Cloud9, five versus four. Minions coming their way are going to have a go at this middle inner. Balls has his key items. Sneaky's got his key items. And high even has all that he needs to work with with talent. The percentage plus black wow. armor penetration. Here, again, those Corky missiles, great poke. Acorn is not tanky yet. You just saw those Corky missiles, the rake as well from high. It does a lot of damage to him. He can't get into their faces right now. He's not the big tanky frontline they need. This is why in Champion Select, we were saying that Cloud9 need to make something happen early because this is the point. Rod of Ages is stacking up. Uh, Dade is only sitting on his shiv. He hasn't had completed his Blade of the Ruin King yet. Insane game. Eight, seven, six, seven hundred gold lead for Cloud9. We've got the Ghost Blade done on Spirit, so taking a, a different route to some other Rengars that we do see, but yeah. that Ghost Blade obviously works very well with him. Yeah, there's so many schools of thought on Rengar, and that's why we see such a wide variance in you know success rates across the world. Kakao was actually the guy who started the whole cooldown reduction uh, in Tanky Build Rengar a long, long time ago, but Rengar went through some changes, now a lot of people opting for mobility boots, and we do often see cutlasses weaved in there. But man, early finishing of the Ghost Blade. He's looking to get Sneaky in the back and try to one versus one him. Cloud9 do gift across the blue buff. Sneaky, he's had, honestly, a fantastic series so far. He really has been the man shining light for Cloud9 delivering. Balls, though, picking up those triple kills in the pit. That's jump started his build and you can see now that that's on his hourglass is almost complete it will be a big difference in the next fight but let's not get ahead of ourselves daddy has got himself the bladed rune king aesthetic chief bladed rune king also picked up by death along with the brutalize that now is played so they're not too far behind it's still only a 1000 gold differential and they're looking at a twitch plus yasuo plus maokai a team fight like that is really really scary and hard to work around but 
you know, Cloud9 do have a lot of tools themselves. As we mentioned, the Braum Wall and Equalizer are going to do a lot. Let's see if they can catch them in the jungle and use oh, the range in their up. favor. Going to turn around here, Sneaky going to go straight down in this one. Good Equalizer will catch a lot of the mini, but Falls is low. Spirit dies over. They're going for medium, but Lemon Nation getting the knock up on the back. Death went oh, low, but they couldn't finish Whoa. him up. It's a four for nothing. A few blinking red health bars. Balls himself is low and trying to run on that top side, but destruction for Blue. Yeah, this is still risky. They're going Baron Balls. Not going to risk it. He's got teleport available. There's no wards that I can see around there that he can get onto, though. Yeah. So this could well be an early Baron for Samsung Blue. And just that slight lack of vision in that pit. That was it. That's all that he needed. Adade just went straight into it. Yeah. When these team fights are going to be that close, you can't afford to just run into an area blind here. Cloud9 were trying to get vision down, but Blue are the ones who already had control, and they just run up to the bush here. Immediate jump on both carries. Both care balls and sneaky right there get taken out of the fight. There's no hope for you when it, that happens this early on. Because I remember was kept down really, really early on, trying to get back into this game. So that was the dream opening for Blue to be able to combo, take out both the Corky and the Rumble there. Really well played by Blue, baiting in Cloud9, or just capitalizing on Cloud9's, you know, exploratory mission. Well. See Cloud9 trying to set themselves a trap this time around. It may well be Spirit. Catchy's in there. They do get down hard just off at the side. Minute before the Dragon. Is it in the right time? That's the question. They try and come around. Blue buff. Will they steal it away? You can see. Looks like that's going to get picked up. That will go across the Sneaky. And with this Dragon up, we will have Hart back alive in time. He's going to get enough time to run back down here. But Death, oh. he's rushing in for this one. High so is Rengar. Out. Yeah, Rengar's ultimate was spotted there. So they know it's down. This could actually be bad for Samsung Blue. They are going to have Hart coming back into the fight. The jungle being stripped away along with Vision by Cloud9. Less than half a minute as they move towards the Dragon. Hart should be there in time. If not, just as the fight starts. Samsung Blue going to loop around the bottom side. Cloud9 looking to actually catch them out here possibly Whoa. or at least stop them pushing onto that there. bottom tower. Oh, Deft is going to try and come around. He's looking to flank. And they are all cramped and grouped up. That's perfect position for both Dade and Deft if they catch him in the tri -bus. They've been bullied away from this dragon. It is just spawning on time. Red Bull's being picked up by Sneaky. We'll see whether they re-engage. I don't think they fancy this one. Yeah, they're going to back away. It's going to go Samsung Blue. That gives them a 3,000 gold lead. Two out of three dragons. That Baron buff that they still got running. Probably another reason why they don't want to fight. Five versus five. And there was the catch on Hart. Just a simple hidden trap, really, in, yep. in that side brush as Hart walks through. Yeah. During that replay, too, uh, Blue were able to clear out a lot of that vision that Cloud9 got down into the blue side jungle. So even after taking the dragon, Blue are also able to fight back in those vision wars and try and make sure that those plays do not happen again. That was a pretty big pick there for Cloud9, though, because they also burned the exhaust from Hart. So a couple of spikes in items for Cloud9. They did get the team out now complete, which is a big item for Talon. And, of course, that Zonya's Hourglass now for Ball. So they were both picked up after that Dragon engage, so they didn't want to get involved. They knew they had a lot of gold in their pockets to spend. So next time around, they may, well, not give it up so easily, but... Of course, that does give Samson blue the edge in gold and in team fight. It's really a case of finding the right fight, picking the right target, getting one of those carries down early if they can. Yeah, and not only do blue have the advantage in gold, but they also have the advantage in experience, which is really, really big. Not only because of the extra levels that you get to put in your abilities, but also, just the stats that you get. Remember, it's 500 to 600 gold a value of stats that you get per level, depending on what kind of champion you have, what they have, uh, you know, mana or whatever, um, that you get every time you level. And it's just a little bit too much now for Cloud9 to actually fight, especially with Baron buff here. Dade's closing in on that level 16, which is going to be really key for them. Just trying to get rid of the pink wards. I mean, that bottom side of Cloud9's jungle is all oh, wow. wards from Samsung Blue. And Dade has gone completely unchecked on this yeah. bottom lane. Took the outer turret, took the inner turret. 
There was some clean pushing down there, and they're so scared about this engage. You can see Hart just off the side. He wants to catch them all with that wave, and Dade can just swoop in and finish the job, which is why he's protecting off that coverage instead. Cloud9, they're going to hold on. They've got to be careful that Defton stealth his way in as well. There's so many angles that Samson Blue have to catch Cloud9 out right now with that lower half of the jungle. And Blue were also able to use their Baron to completely choke out the vision from Cloud9. They controlled the map for so long, you know, Cloud9 can't fight them with that Baron buff on, that they've been able to secure vision all over the map and really keep Cloud9 boxed up in their own, under their own turrets and inside their own jungle here. Cloud9 doing a good job defensively warding though. Trying to keep a little bit of an opening. Cloud9 is looking for that level 16 though. Yeah, continuing to farm to get to that level as fast as possible. And, well, he's going to make short work of it as well. The way that he's picking up those minion waves. About three quarters of the experience that he needs. And you can see the deft and spirit between the three of those. A pretty formidable team. Pretty invisible team as well if you play it right. Yep, hiding in bushes as well, using Dade as a little bit of bait. Now Dade's done an interesting thing here as well, and he got a Quicksilver Sash, so he can cleanse that silence from high if they do. Oh, there's the oh, invisibility. They're position, they're jumping in. High's gonna get caught out, flashes in, does Whoa. not get away with it in time. And well, Cloud9 can't react, this is an inhib turret going down, they're gonna flank around the back of them. Gonna try for the kills here, Acorn has they, get they need to hurry up because that inhibitor has already been beaten down. There's the teleport from Acorn, he's oh, coming into the fight. He's going to be at the front as well to get this fight oh. started. The knockup comes in, pulls the focus, he throws down. He's equalizing as fast as possible. The exhaust keeps Daddy out with the fight for now though. But well, they're going on to Meteos down on the bottom. He gets knocked up and finished off. That's two men down for Cloud9. High might actually be able to rejoin this fight. A Sneaky kills off there, but three men from Samsung Blue are there. There is the kill on to Sneaky. Lemon Nation tries to get under his tower, but won't be able to escape. And just like that, they pick up three, plus the kill on high right at the start, and the inhib. Only balls and high left up here. Not much they can do except clean up the scraps. Rough go here for Cloud9. They made it such a valiant effort towards the mid game here. But these, <laughs> that song, <laughs> she needs to work on that. Sounds like me singing. <laughs> the preview of Joe Miller. Now, this is the acorn teleporting in into the, you know, five versus four. So at that point, really hard for Clan to do anything. And it's hard for them to get a good equalizer because it's such a spread out area. So uh, good job by Blue, you know, collapsing here, split, spreading up Cloud9. And Sneaky has been, he's been really a bright spot for Cloud9 this whole series long, performing really well. Acorn was doing a great job just to get in his face the whole way there, though. So Baron respawned. Dragon up in 40 seconds. Samsung Blue taking away the resources, everything from there. Death actually in the mid lane. Sneaky's going to go for this one. Equalizer blown. That's tricky. High goes in for it as well, but the rest of Samsung Blue are coming around the side. Here comes Dade trying to carry it around that Spirit stealth up, jumps in, goes on. Medios is the focus, the kick lands. The tower's still doing damage for them, and nobody goes down. A tricky fight, a lot blown with the Baron now up. Held on to that one really well there, did Cloud9. The turret, of course, does help, but Samsung Blue continue to stick around. They want to get in, and just a couple of auto attacks here out of Dade, and Death will finish it off. There it goes, turret number five of the game for Samsung Blue. Dragon alive, Baron alive, a lot of options here for the Koreans. Yeah, that extra inhibitor down bottom, uh, not going to be available for Cloud9. The super minions coming in. Makes balls have to recall, so Cloud or so Blue can pretty much clean up the map here. Take Dragon and get some more vision back around that Baron. Cloud Nine gonna have to try and jump on some sort of vision play and catch Blue unawares here. So now they spot it out. Oh, blocks off with the wind wall. Cloud Nine, they're hanging on. I feel on a knife edge right now. It's a 10,000 gold differential at the half hour mark in this matchup. And you can see in terms of gold differential, it's a giant gulf, almost 5,000 difference between Dade and High. That's a serious, serious problem. Much closer for the AD carries and top laners and even the junglers. It's really all about Dade right now. 7-1-5 on Yasuo, proving honestly why it's been banned so many times. 
Yeah, no doubts left there. <laughs> yeah, that gold lead has just jumped as well here. Cloud9 was holding on for so long in this, but that last fight, Baron going the way of Samsung Blue, and now they're completely holding them. And between Twitch and Yasuo, that Baron's not going to last very long. Cloud9 have had such a good run at Worlds this year, though. You know, we heard all the interviews. They're very happy with how far they have been able to come. The improvement over last year is tremendous. Being able to at least take a decent amount of games here. And oh, the, the, it's not over yet, Kobe. Don't give up the dream. All right. Rally caps on, boys. The Baron is getting started. If they're going to come back, this is the spot to come back. You catch him at Baron, and you get a good equalizer. Oh, they've separated Acorn or more. Acorn separated Cloud9. I'm not sure which way it is. There's an equalizer. Oh, pretty good. It's a good one. Hard taken solo. They get down Dane. But can they get anything else? Death, Death no one. Down. Sneaky comes in. It's back and forth. He has to get the hell out of there for the rat -a -tat -tat. Spirit goes in towards him. He's trying to keep them at bay. Oh! oh. The exhaust goes down. High pick. Off. It's the ace once again for Samsung Blue. It was so hopeful for a moment, but again, it's the Koreans that come out on top. Another close fight there. Blue gonna run straight up the mid to try and take turret. Well, they're gonna have this middle inner turret. Inhibitor turret should go down. Bottom lane is pushed here by minions onto the inhibitor, of course, so they could lose a fair amount. Oh, Medium and balls about to come yeah, up. Yeah, they're gonna be both back into this one. Lemon Nation already spawning in there as well. The inhibitor, though, is dead in that bottom lane. Minion, the Winions. All right, so let's take a look. They jumped the tank down to half at the beginning. Pretty good start. Plus, they get a great Rom and um, Rumble combo right there to take down the back line. But really, Death gets left alone here. And him being at full life, chasing off the last four members, even though for a moment they had the numbers advantage, Sneaky does get chased off. Three of them caught in Aqua Prison while Deft was using yeah. Ta -ta -ta, yeah. and the Ghost Blade is just like free shooting. Oh no, oh no, face check lamination going in, has to pop the Unbreakable, tries to react, Sneaky caught out with the Aqua Prison again. The Baron, of course, was not taken in the last engagement. We may see a replay. Yeah, got to just go around and basically do it better this time of Cloud9. They're going to go for Dane. They're going to go for Into the kick. Dane is going to go for Sneaky. But well, they've done it. They've killed Dane. They're going to try and push. Oh! 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 On to death. Death goes down. Acorn's going to fall as well. Whoa! 45 seconds. Four timers. What can Cloud9 do? This is reminiscent of Kaboom getting picks on the carries. They got the two main carries. Shoving up mid, they're gonna go for this inhibitor. They have to get the inhibitor down though. Only a couple minutes to work with. They can do it. Clever work from Spirit. He's gonna try and cut the line off, but this is gonna be one in him down. And Cloud9, they may try to keep pushing. Go for the win. Death Diamonds, it's 20 seconds still. This they is... have to go for the Nexus turret. They're gonna push in there. Go Clever the win. tanking it up. Here comes Spirit, forget him. Try and get the Nexus turret oh, down. Got him. Very second the damage, Lemonation, tanking the turret, gonna get one down, Spirit take it so low, they're gonna keep on this Five. one, they're gonna go down, go for it, he's gonna go low, Two. Oh, he's doing a jump, go for the what? they're up, they're up, they're up, they're up, they're 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 they're
pulled this through the roof. All credit to Cloud9. They were 10,000 gold behind. They made the play. They made it work. And just a couple more seconds, maybe a oh. little bit more focus, maybe go for the turrets <laughs> over Spirit. Oh, there's so yeah, many the questions. Mark, the flashbacks. Oh. You said the hand on their heart, but it was Nami. It was heart at the end <laughs> that was disrupting them. Spirit as well did a lot of big work before he went down. They spawned back in. It was so close for Cloud9, but it's Samsung Blue who triumphed here three to one. And what a match that was as well. Could not have asked for a better ending. Absolutely tremendous stuff. So, Blue, victorious, 3-1, just like their sister team was over TSM, and they will now face each other in the semi-final as they bow to the crowd. And you can see, honestly, on their faces, they knew how close that was. They knew that was so, so close to going down to the final game. And then all bets are off. All nerves, completely everything in their favor. Cloud9, they can go home. Great you know, showing. Absolutely fantastic showing here. Really have pressured Samsung Blue. Beautiful, brilliant game. They'll go home. I feel, though, after that, disappointed as well because game one victory so close to tying what it up at 2-2 yeah. here but for North America you know this world championship TSM took a game off Samson White who for me looked by far and away the strongest team at this world championship Cloud9 taking game number one almost forcing us to a fifth game there this has been a solid world championship for Cloud9, uh, for, for North America. I'll tell you what, though, what a semi-final we have now. The two Samsungs facing off against each other. It's what kind of everyone p predicted coming into this world as soon as the group stage was there. It was a possibility. And as we already heard, it can't be a third time running, surely. We'll see how it works out. That's, of course, next week. And even Dardy with a sigh of relief Whoa. there at the end. You know where the fingers would have been pointed if that had been the he game. Was the he got, caught. Yeah. got out. Sneaky, though. Oh. Absolutely brilliant, this, this series. Yeah. Really has been the shining light for Cloud9. Answered a lot of critics, honestly, coming into this, uh, this whole world. Yeah, Sneaky has always been top tier North American AD carry time and time again he's shown up and even when Cloud9 were having their struggles after you know High had to go through his surgery and he's coming back to the team and they're trying to work through that Sneaky was so consistent for this team he's he just shows up every single day and we've only had two quarterfinals we've got <laughs> another two to go I'm not sure if they're anything like that I'm going to survive them uh, you know, the group stage was hard enough to live through, but that one, another amazing one. We've got two more to go. The old Chinese affair, Najin White Shield against OMG as well. Absolutely crazy world championship so far. Yeah, the whole world championships has absolutely delivered. We've had amazing games throughout. Every single day you can look at on the world championship calendar and think, oh, that game, that was so good. This one, so good. And just there, what a fantastic finish multiple to everything. Multiple upsets, multiple backdoors, multiple nexuses that were close to going down. So good. Fantastic stuff. For now, though, we're going to go over to Shox, who is standing by with Samsung Blues winning players. Thank you very much, D-Man. I am standing by here with Heart after that fantastic ending. So, obviously, the first thing I want to ask you is how you did there. How did you manage to keep that nexus alive and just the feelings going through your mind? Uh, 죽을 수밖에 없었던 거예요. 그래서 이거 진짜 막 끝나는 거 아니냐 막 하면서 막 어떻게든 막아보자 막 저희 랭가는 막 자기가 백도를 해서 자기가 먼저 밀겠다 하면서 막 달려들었는데 그냥 몸으로 막 막자고 해서 이렇게 불러서 막 <웃음> 진짜 너무 지는 줄 알았어요. 진짜 지는 줄 알았어요. 근데 아 그래도 어떻게 네. 아 근데 헤일이 이렇게 브라운 방어막에 아니, 방패막에 다 막히는 거 보고 아 이거 진짜 졌다 막이 생각했는데 다행히도 예. <laughs> okay, um. <laughs> <laughs> Giving him a hard time. <laughs> so, okay, after I still die, we're like, oh my god, just run away, go back to your base. And then after one by one die, we're like, are we going to lose? Oh my god, what's, ha what's happening? And then um, Rengar was like, okay, I'm just going to backdoor. And then we're like, no, come back, just defend our base. 
And then, like, he tried his best, and, like, um, Brown, he blocked my Nami's ult, so we're like, oh my god, are we really gonna lose this? And then eventually, we, sp we re respawn, and then we block, we defend our Nexus, and we, we won, I don't know, we're so excited. <laughs> oh. Well, it was a great ending, but for so ho how excited you are, you do have the semi-final versus White, tell me, how do you think that matchup is going to go? You've done it before, but this is the world stage. Uh, <clears throat> 스프링 시즌이랑 썸머 시즌에서는 아 우리가 이길 수도 있겠다라는 생각을 했었는데 이번만큼은 진짜 어떻게 될지 모르겠어요 아직은 그래서 앞으로 연습을 하는 거에 따라서 달라질 것 같고 또 분명히 많은 사람들이 이제 화이트 팀이 항상 이긴다고 이야기를 했었지만 저희는 항상 이겨왔었기 때문에 어떻게 될 건지는 사강 이제 그 동안에 준비하는 거에 따라서 많이 달라질 것 같아요. 오케이. <웃음> Um, when we beat Samsung White during spring and summer season, like, but for now, they're a completely different team. They're much stronger. I think right now, this is the strongest phase. Um, but even before, a lot of other people, they said Samsung White's going to beat us, but we won, eventually won. So I think it's going to mainly depend on how much we practice. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really good match. Um, to follow up on that, your direct counter partner in lane, Mata, said before, well, this time, we have a pretty good chance to beat them. What do you think of that? 그 이제 상대할 마타 선수가 이제 4강에서 삼성 브루 팀 상대로 이길 수 있을 것 같다고 이제 얘기를 했었는데 그에 대해 어떻게 생각하시나요? 어 원래 항상 인터뷰는 그렇게 했는데 매번 졌었어요. 그래서 <웃음> 그렇게 크게 신경 안 쓰고요. 뭐 그냥 게임 잘 하고 재밌는 경기 하고. 예. 그랬으면 좋겠어요. 그리고 거기서 이긴 팀이 꼭 우승했으면 좋겠고요. 예. Um, before like before our um, Samsung Blue and White games, he always mentioned in the interview that he would beat us, but eventually we won both games. So I don't really um, care what he said, but I think it's more important to just, um, play really hard, practice hard, and have a fun game. And I, whoever wins the semifinals match, I hope they win the world world championship. Wow, well, very nice to hear. Um, just. A couple of more things I want to ask you. First up, what do your teammates think about the support you're giving them through your haircut? Oh, 그 팀원들이 하트 선수 머리에 대해서 어떤 말 혹시 하던가요? 어 뭐랄까 제가 원래 머리 스타일을 자주 이제 좀 특이한 스타일을 많이 바꾸긴 했었는데 아, 그래서 저희 팀원들은 딱히 어 그냥 이형또 바꿨네 막 이런 식으로 넘어갔어요. 근데 이제 다른 분들이 주위에서 많이 이야기를 해주시더라고요. 이제 주로 이제 라이업 분들이 오셔서 아 멋있다 뭐막 이렇게 얘기를 많이 해주시고 <웃음> 네 그랬어요. I'm um, like I changed my hair so many times, so like my teammates were like, oh, he just got a new haircut, so they didn't really say anything. But like a lot of riders and a lot of friends around me, they said, wow, you look really cool. Well, I think you look really cool as well. Um, is there finally something you want to say to the crowd and all the people supporting you? 마지막으로 이제 팬들한테 한말한 말씀 해주세요. 아, 어 이제 학교 학교가 이제 레, 뭐야 레클리스랑 경기를 할때 마지막 경기에서 이제 저희 팀이 이기고 레클리스가 이제 학교한테 와서 이야기를 했어요. 뭐 우리 팀한테 너희가 이겼으니까 너희 팀이 꼭 우승해라. 그래야지 내가 여기서 떨어진 게 자랑스러울 수가 있다. 이런 식으로 이야기를 했는데 예, 그거에 대해서 학교가 꼭 자기 약속 지켜주겠다고 우승하겠다는 이야기를 했거든요. 그래서 어, 저희 팀 되게 우승 꼭할수 있도록 노력 많이 할 거고요. 그리고 항상 좀 불안한 모습 같은 것들도 보여드리는데 그래도 응원해 주시는 팬분들께 정말 감사하다는 말씀 드리고 싶어요. So after our game with Fnatic, Reckless came over to Death and he said, since you guys beat us. Please, I mean, win the win world championship. That way, um, the team who beat us will be the world champion. So, and Def really wanted to keep that promise. So, as a teammate, I want to um, keep the, keep the promise as well with Deft. 
And for all the fans like, for, for cheering us, like, I want to say sorry because of our unstable games. But um, please keep cheering for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. You got a chance to make it all right in the semis. I think. And as for us, we're going to wrap things up over at the desk. Thank you very much, Sharks. Congratulations to Samsung Blue on another fantastic series. And with all of the Western teams now being out of the 2014 World Championships, I have a special request to the live design team from both North America and European LCS. Can we make the Nexus less tanky? <laughs> <laughs> um, with that, let's actually pick up the replay that ended that game. I think it's going to say it all, so let's get that on the screen immediately. Monte Cristo and the rest of the guys at the desk, let's start this one off, roll it out, and just talk me through these final moments from both Cloud9 and Samsung Blue's perspective. Oh, I'm trying to remember which fight this was. This was a this good beat, the yeah, I guess caught, yeah, C9, get back the to the The three game. picks that lead to the inhibitor ah. and the Nexus push. So Double the flash kick was awesome, first of all, that was sick. Yeah, and they just kind of all in the chase. I've actually never seen Medios pull that move off. I mean, it was just so clutch. No, I told to do you, he, tra moment. he trained his champion at the start. He was bad, but he said like, no, I'm going to train those mechanics. He wins games in LCS purely on play. This bubble right here, this three-man bubble. Yeah. I, I thought as the Nexus was about to die, that Hart won his team the game. If that bubble didn't hit three people, they might have been. Got another bomb it. shield. Bomb yeah. absorbs it. And it Here's what you want to look for, actually, though. So as as they chase down, there's three things to watch for. First of all, Medios has kicked back up at the very end here. He can actually kick Deft um, to keep him from dealing damage. Also, at the very end, uh, Corky flashes into the spray and pray shot that kills Lee Sin. Watch for that at the very end. If you kick Deft away, so, if you don't die, you actually question, survive here. Because they focused down Rengar in that fight. Question the double lift. If those auto attacks had been on the tower and then the Nexus, would this have been a Nexus kill? It's so hard to tell. That's so hard no, to tell Rengar because he, Rengar would, might have been able to kill somebody, so they had to clean him up. The, the point of this play, though, we can, we can scrutinize this and be like, maybe, 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 is yeah. that C9 yeah. was so far down, they had the balls to make a, kick, uh, a pick with a kick flash, and that was not, not a flash kick, that was a kick yeah, yeah, flash. Yeah. And they basically realized, guys, we just got two picks. We will never ever in, in this match get two more picks. We have to run for the base and try and finish. And they had the audacity to do that, and that is just what separates like the great teams from like the best yeah. teams. And, and that's why I think Cloud9 is really like the best team in the LCS, either NA or a EU. This is a team that can play from behind that has a very clear idea about how they're going to win the game, usually has excellent pick and ban phase. Uh, there's, I mean, they really brought it out this series, and they played an amazing series against a very strong opponent. I have to ask a question to Freak, who's casted this team for many years now, yeah. watched them for a good year and a half. I feel that Oriana needs to be added to High's champion pool because Talon was average at best in yeah. both the group stages and now quarterfinals for him. I mean, is 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 it, that something it's, you? It's true. On? Honestly, every time at Worlds High, unfortunately, gets brought down the champion that he's not quite as comfortable on. You could say it costs his team the game a little bit. I mean, he's playing a very unsafe champion against a Rengar, right, and getting caught out for it. I don't want to say it's High's fault to lose his game. That's completely unfair. But yes, he's getting pushed a little bit too far down his champion pool. I would like to see him broaden out his top tier a bit. Oriana would be a good pick. I mean, it's whatever you want it to be. Dada has his own crazy champion pool, and it works for him just fine, usually. Um, just learn learn more top tier champions for you, and you're good to go. Yeah, definitely. I think High is a player with a lot of big strengths and a lot of big weaknesses. Obviously, the champion pool and the fact that he gets caught out of position so frequently, but also, he's the shot caller for that team. And anytime they rotate, anytime they make those big plays and those clutch decisions, right. it's high. So to cut you off, we are talking about high. It's actually fantastic. We have an interview with him. We will come back to the discussion in a moment, but Shox, over to you and high. Thank you very much, Quick Shot, and uh, well, thank you very much for talking to us here, Hi. First up, tell me about those last moments. We just heard Hart's perfect perspective, but for you guys, of course, at the other end. There were like two things that we could have changed differently that may have made us win the game, but when we got those two kills, we knew if we didn't do this, we'd eventually lose the game anyway. So at that point in time, we're like, we're going for this. If we, if we, if we get it, we win the game. But if it fails, we lose. And we put our eggs in the basket, and it didn't work out, sadly. Well, you got to go for it. Does that also make you think of the rest of the series? Because game one, you guys had it in the back. So good. So what happened after that? I think if I can just get a little better personally, myself, then our games would go much smoother. A lot of times I did like a little mistake or did something bad, and my team wasn't nearly with me on it. And it just made the games really hard. So if I can fix the issues that I have personally as a player, I think our team can improve greatly. But it's just both games we're doing well. And then we did one bad play and they capitalized on it super hard and kind of just snowballed the game from that. 
Well, that's a fantastic thing to say from you. What do you take away from this, knowing that you're out, but you did put up a fantastic showing for the NA scene and your team in specific? Well, we did our best. At the very least, we won a game off them, and we came close a couple other times, so I'm happy for that. And I guess we finally just get to go on break now. We've been playing the entire year, and we finally get to relax now. Everyone gets to do their own thing and basically kind of mellow out a little bit. And then reset for uh, the next season. What do you want to say to your fans that have been supporting you throughout this? Thanks, to everyone, for cheering for us. Uh, we really appreciate you guys a lot. Sadly, we couldn't pull out a win, but at the very least, we support you guys cheering for us. And thanks a lot. Well, thank you for the interview, and thank you very much for talking to us. And as for us, we're going to wrap things up a little further over with Trevor and the guys at the desk. Thank you very much, Shox. Congratulations once again to Cloud9. I think they can walk away uh, proud of their performance at Worlds. A few small improvements and maybe they could have made it to the semifinals. Let's talk a little bit more about Cloud9 before talking about Samsung Blue and rounding out the day, Crepo. Oh yeah, I was actually going to jump from the Cloud9 poem to uh, Samsung Blue because I feel like while every team has their weaknesses, you have to exploit them. And I feel Spirit, this match, exploited them so beautifully. He yeah. ran top when there was no vision, Balls was running up to Ward, and right at that moment, Max ranged Rengar leap, and he holds his boa. He holds it till after the flash, and over and over, he'll go mobility boots, gank mid, he'll jump in, place a pink ward, hold the boa, force high to react, boa strike, and then just screw it high, and he basically won that game for Samsung Blue. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, holding the bola was just so key in those early engagements. And also the team composition that Blue got, we saw a lot of Yasuo bans in this series. Instead, Cloud9 opted to ban the Rise this game, and I feel that was a mistake because that meant pretty much that High couldn't play Syndra here, and it kind of actually forced them onto the Talon pick a little bit awkwardly. And Dade's Yasuo is terrifying. So, Freak, let's yeah. step back a little bit from the micro, maybe talk about the series in general. Sure. Samsung Blue, three games in a row, punishing Cloud9 for their mistakes. And Cloud9 had quite a few. I think when they watch these replays back, they'll, they'll learn them. But we also saw a lot of weaknesses in Samsung Blue that Cloud9 punished several times over the course of the series. Yeah, so thinking back about the series, game one, fantastic analysis and thought process by C9 to get that level one invade. Really sexy, really smart, set him up ahead. We saw all four games, the team with the lead early on snowballed it. Both these teams incredibly good with the lead. It's the, the uh, tendencies you can exploit that you can build a lead against these teams. C9 repeated the same invade multiple times, and you saw Lemon face check by himself in game three. That was exploited. Similarly, again, the game one invade by C9 really smart as well. So both these teams learning about their opponents, exploiting mistakes, snowballing leads very well. Um, also, just to correct what I said earlier, Lee Sin Kick was not at however unbreakable was wasted on Nami. That would have been something to maybe break some Twitch damage down. I just wanted to make sure I didn't <laughs> get that one out incorrectly. There was no kick up. Um, yeah, but you know, thinking, speaking of individual mistakes, overall in the series though, right, these guys have had early game deficits, high bit of weaker champion pool sometimes. Uh, Samsung Blue in general, they don't win the two on two lane, and that can be very rough against like Imp and Mata. Double if talk to me about the series before we move on and talk about the brackets. Um, yeah, I was just going to talk about Samsung Blue a little bit because their early game. It's like people will just slap them in the face and they'll just take it. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I love that. And then mid game, <laughs> they just sure they they don't explode. Love that. That's maybe you. They make these ridiculous wow. plays where they just get an ace and baron every time. Honestly, all three of these previous games, they just get an ace and baron. And then it's like, OK, game's over. Samsung Blue's got baron. They've aced you. They're just going to wipe you over and over and over again. So it's just so impressive how much better mid game these guys are than everyone else. I completely agree. We'll have a chance to see their mid game again in just a week's time. Uh, with another quarterfinal wrapped up, let's actually take a look at the world's bracket and see how 50% of the quarterfinals have shaped up. Both Samsung organizations coming out above their American opposition 3 to 1. And that will set us for the team kill semi-final between Samsung White and Samsung Blue, yet again on Korean soil. Bottom half of the bracket is going to be a China versus China matchup tomorrow. It'll be, uh, uh, of course, between Starhorn Royal Club and Edward Gaming, and then followed that by Najin White Shield and OMG. I just very briefly want to talk a little bit of hype about tomorrow's quarterfinal matchup between the two Chinese squads. There's a bit of discrepancy between our analysts about whether EDG are going to rise to the occasion considering it's against friendly opponents or whether or not Starhorn, Starhorn Royal Club's going to choke. Uh, where do you find yourself leaning towards double lift? Oh, man, it's so hard. I think <laughs> EDG, just because they're so consistent and they, like Freak said before, they always step up when it actually matters. But 
Uh, it's just really hard for me to tell. I, I chose, I think, 3-2 to EDG, but it could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised. Damn it, double of predictions are tomorrow. Sorry. Freak, <laughs> where Sorry. are you leaning to build up some hype yeah. for tomorrow's match? Uh, well, for me, building hype, I'm just going to go against you and say 3-2 for Star Hunt Royal. <laughs> I'm just a screw with I you fight also you. as well. That, that, I mean, we can battle. It's fine. Your item build sucks, so I'd win the 1v1s. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, you built a Zephyr a second item on Vayne. Like, I don't know what you're doing. Um, but no, uh, it's honestly a great match. They have very, very different styles. It's going to be a lot of fun to see if Starhorn Roller Club can use their typical early game advantage. They're just incredible players overall, right? And it's just going to be a bloodbath. It's Chinese law. They fight a lot. Well, yeah. Final thoughts from Crypto Monty before we move on. I just agree that I think that if the average league viewer is, has interest in a lot of different things, if you're, you're more like macro strategy rotations and calm early games, you would have loved these series so far. If you just want full on Brawl Fest, you're probably going to love tomorrow a little <laughs> more. <laughs> I'm going to love tomorrow. I have no idea who's going to win. I'm leaning slightly towards one side, which is Royal Club. But honestly, I don't watch enough LPL throughout the entire season to 100% be right here. But I'm just looking forward to see Uzi play. Final thoughts, Monte Cristo. Well, I'm leaning towards EDG. I think they're going to pick it up uh, in a best of five, and that with these couple weeks, we'll kind of re empower them. And I hope we get to see that because if you guys actually get to see EDG and Name when they're on fire, it is a pleasure to watch them team fighting a lot like Samsung Blue. And if you don't, it's his fault because he's cursed them <laughs> with the caster curse, as it were. So you've heard of the opinions. There's a bit split in the disc, which I'm excited about. And that world's knockout stage will resume with Day three of the quarterfinals here in Busan, and that Chinese rivalry continues when Edward Gaming meets the Starhorn Royal Club. That series will begin tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central European Summer Time, which is actually 10 p.m. Pacific Time tonight. So guys, set your alarms accordingly. Today's series started off with a bang and it ended exactly the same way. That does it for day two of the quarterfinals. I'd once again like to thank all of our guests here on the analyst desk and from all of us and the entire world's broadcast team. Thank you for watching. We'll see you for day three as the 2014 World Championship continues. amazing so far. Let's get these games underway, ladies and gentlemen. The Cloud9 keep pushing on the tower. Oh, the corner. Oh, that's going to get burst out there. Oh, oh, from the back. Elimination comes in. They managed to find a play on. Hard goes low. This is a wide one. And Cloud9 takes game one. We did not come here to lose today. The shield pulls in, the ignite, not quite gonna get him down. Sneaky's in trouble, it's gonna be an ace. What a base the Samson Blue strike back in front of their own Korean crowd. He's gonna keep going as well. Good knock the part of Lemonade. And Elimination will go down and Samson Blue take the lead.